morning, Evan. We Good finally morning. meet after many years. Of yeah, <laughs> it's what three or four, three or four years. So we're in Cambridge in the UK. Uh, we're at uh, what we sometimes call Pi Towers, uh, the head office of Raspberry Pi. Tell me how long is it now? Uh, it's so it's about five years since we announced that we were going to try and do it, and it's about four and a half years since we actually started selling it. And that is also how it started. It mm -hmm. was at first a sort of an attempt. Yeah. We were a community of people who were excited about this product a long time before we were an actual product company. The first early <laughs> month, it was a bit tense because you know how a to produce bit, a this. A little bit tense. So we, as you say, it was very tense. So we launched on the uh, we launched on the 29th of February 2012. So we picked this slightly peculiar day. Picked we launched on the leap day. Okay. Um, we. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we really struggled. I think we took something like 100,000 units, uh, 100,000 orders on the first day. It took, took almost six months to okay. ship those because, you know, our idea of scale was, hey, we're going to build 2,000, 10,000 of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, then, and then all of a sudden, it's, it's extremely hard to put it, that kind of step function in your production is, is very, very hard to manage, particularly when the step happens right at the start, you know, before yeah. you've developed any capabilities. So it took us a long time. Yeah. But by the end of that year, we were in high volume serial production. It was a smooth ride. Always been a smooth ride. For... There's, there's, there's never been a smooth ride. Okay. Uh, every time, every time we launch something, we 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 le we learn something interesting. I mean, the obvious one of those was the um, the Raspberry Pi Two. We discovered that uh, you may have seen this. The Raspberry Pi Two. If you hit the back of the board with a camera flash. Yeah. And we were launched the Raspberry Pi Two. People were really excited about it. They were like, oh, I want to take a picture of it. And then people gradually came to realize that every time they took a close up flash picture of a Raspberry Pi Two, it crashed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. Because it reset that. the because it re reset the power supply chip. Every time we launch something, we have a we have a surprise. Uh, you know, there are lots of little surprises no one sees. You know, little kind of bumps in the road in the supply chain that we have to iron out. Sure. You know, all of a sudden you, you wake up one morning and you know a component vendor is saying to you, "Now, nah, I'm sorry, I don't have yeah. any components." Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of that stuff, um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of it's amazing the scale at which we're building now. We're building three four hundred thousand a month. Okay. Um, so we're building, you know, we're, we're building as many a week now as it took us as we built enough. Huge, six huge, months. huge volumes. Huge. With how many people are you currently? Uh, we are. Let's see. Depends how you count. So we're currently so Raspberry Pi Trading. So we have a foundation which owns the trading company. Right. Okay. I run the trading company, um, and uh, the trading company is about twenty people. Okay. Uh, the foundation is more like thirty or forty. And how many engineers have you got working on Raspberry Pi? Uh, working on Raspberry Pi, it's about uh, about between fifteen and twenty. You know, if I if I hear and follow uh, Raspberry Pi and Foundation, I, I probably would say mission accomplished. Um, you know, you have <laughs> you have uh, set up some goals and some objectives, yeah. and I think it's funny you managed about, it. It's the funny thing about missions, right? That you accomplish the mission and then you just get another mission. So you remember our, our original mission was to get the number of people applying to study computer science at the University of Cambridge up to the same level it was at in 1999, 2000. So yeah. we had 600 then, then we fell to 250 in about 2008. Yeah. Um, last year we had 800. Okay. So we, don't we, you know, we've, we've so that, that, yeah, yeah. Um, And so on some level, yeah, absolutely mission accomplished. But I think what we kind of realize is how the kind of, the lack of ambition, you know, that that's a really poor mission, you know, it's a small mission. And so, you know, increasingly what we're, what we're seeing ourselves as doing is trying to then roll that out, not just to Cambridge, but to everywhere else in the UK, not just to the UK, but to everywhere else in the developed world, not just to everywhere else in the developed world, but potentially everywhere in the developing world as well. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is actually really sad because um, when we did, as I said, when we did Raspberry Pi, you know, we announced in 2011 and we kind of talked people all the way through the process of making, of designing and getting Raspberry Pi 1 into production, yeah. right? And we can't do that anymore. No, because right? we're a, we're a commercial organisation. You know, we have product and flight. You know, we can't go and talk. If I had some plan to uh, sure, to, no, to go see. release Raspberry Pi Four next week, I, um, yeah. I couldn't really tell you about it. It's it's a commercial necessity, but it isn't something that we're particularly yeah. happy about. Yeah. yeah. So we have we have some a number of kind of uh, flagship programs, I guess you could call them, mm -hmm. in the foundation. Um, obviously, the biggest of those, I guess, is Pi Academy. That's our teacher training activity. We bring groups of yep. twenty five teachers either in here. Uh, into we have a partnership with Google to deliver some of this, um, and so we bring them into Google locations, and we also do some um, locations in the US. We bring these groups of teachers in, and we give them a two-day kind of intensive course in how you can uh, deliver a really exciting and robust computing education experience. That's very important, particularly in the UK, because we yeah. recently changed our uh, curriculum. The, we went from a very uh, PowerPoint and Excel 
focused, you know, typing skills focused curriculum, to one which is much more rigorous. But our government hasn't invested any money in teacher training, so that's okay. that's a, that's been a, that's been an important thing. And then we have other programs. Obviously, we have Astro Pi is probably the most famous of these. We put a um, we put a pair of Raspberry Pis on the International Space Station sure. last yeah. year with Tim Peake. Um, and the hope is we can roll that out. That was very successful in the UK, and the hope is as other ESA astronauts go up from other countries, we'll be able to roll that out. So you know, children in Germany, children in France, uh, children in the not Netherlands the will be able to do this, do the same thing because yeah. they love yeah, it. You know, your, yeah. co your code in space is an incredibly <laughs> powerful uh, pitch. Have you been able to measure that? You know, the, the, the big objective having you know young kids uh, getting familiar with coding, etc. Mm. Has that been? Established. That's, yeah. Uh, can, can you put some figure to yeah, it? Yeah, metrics. So, are, so that's the other thing. Metrics are very challenging, right? Because you yeah. want to actually prove you want to prove you're having you're making a difference. And also, it's really helpful for me personally to prove that we're making a difference, not just to kids who are already privileged. Yeah. I mean, if you give a bunch of you know uh, white middle class boys, yeah. right, uh, some more advantages in life, then you know, I mean, have you actually really? Really accomplished, yeah. you know. You've got to you've got to aim for some di for diversity in all in all dimensions. Um, yeah. One of the nice things, the foundation's gone from being five or six people a year ago to being forty people now. Yeah. And one of the nice things about that expansion is it gives us the 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 capability. It gives us we can grow some capabilities, and one of the capabilities we're growing is a research yeah. the capability to go and actually find out whether we're making to gather information and find out if we're making a difference. Being an engineer yourself, you say I, uh, you know, I, sh I should spend perhaps more time in just engineering. What, what is your fascination with electronics yourself? What, uh, um, <laughs> what is there that you know makes you tick or solder what, or? <laughs> yeah, what do I, what do I, what do I like doing? Um, I mean, of course, I have to look back in time, right? Because I've just spent four years running the Raspberry Pi business. So, yeah. um, but um, I mean, I've just always liked. I, I've actually always liked computer games. I'm a computer games guy, so I'm a software engineer. Although I spend a lot of time doing hardware now. Yeah. Um, I'm or have spent a lot of time in the last decade doing hardware. I'm a software engineer, and in particular, I'm a games engineer. My first startup, was okay. a, my first startup was a games company. My third startup was a games company. I still write games in my spare time, and increasingly, what I've been doing is I've been writing games on my um, uh, uh, on old computers, on retro computers. Okay. Uh, in a, in six five zero two, I spent last e yesterday evening writing six five zero two assembler for the BBC Micro. Okay. It's kind of fun. It's almost like you see us being like like weight training. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, I'm, I'm running a business, but yeah. I need to understand engineering. Yeah. And so, you know, you're kind of like, you, you I'm going to do some 6502 yeah. assembly, you know. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I mean, it's, it's, it's important because you do find people in there, you find people who transition to management roles who get yeah. into their 40s and 50s, and they discover that whatever it was that they had that got them to where they are has gone away. You know, yeah, yeah, the motivation lost. and the, drive the, as well. Yeah, motivation, yeah. drive, and capability. And so it's important to me not to turn into one of those people. Where are we if we meet in you know for th another three or four years time? But we're still here in oh, Cambridge. Like, or yeah, are you in Silicon Valley or? Uh, I mean, I hope we're still here in Cambridge because Cambridge is it's one of probably Cambridge and Silicon Valley are the two places in the world where you could have done Raspberry Pi, right? You know, there are you know you need access to the to uh, you need access to engineers, you need access to uh, management talent, you need access to finance, uh, you know, all of these things. Um, so there aren't many places in the world where we could be. This and Silicon Valley are probably two of them. Uh, but I hope we're still here because I think Cambridge is. Every now and then I flirt with with, with going to the US. I got pretty close actually just okay. before Raspberry Pi going to Silicon Valley. But did, what did you decide not to? Uh, uh, Raspberry Pi happened. I was halfway through a visa yeah. application, a US um, a visa application, and Raspberry Pi just fell on top of me and uh, okay. crushed me. <laughs> and, uh, okay. uh, and, and it's five years later, and, and and I still haven't filled in my visa application. So okay, okay, um, so so that. But it's interesting that you compare yeah. Cambridge with uh, Silicon Valley. You say it's probably you know yeah. the only two places in the world where. Yeah. An initiative like Raspberry Pi could have happened. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's that cluster thing, and of course, remember, nobody knows where clusters come from. Governments mm. try to make them because everyone wants the Silicon Valley, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, no one really knows where Silicon Valley came from, and no one really knows how to do it again. Uh, and you can you can put your finger on some things. You can say, look, Stanford is there. Obviously, there's a vast amount of military spending in yeah. in, in yeah. the Bay Area over fifty over fifty or sixty years. Um, so you can kind of point to some of the things that cause Silicon Valley to be there. Likewise, with Cambridge, you can point to well, you've got the university, and you have particular cultural things that have caused um, academics here to be interested in setting up businesses. Um, but it's very hard to it's very hard to, to to tell. We just know that we look around. I go out in the street. I mean, between here and the station, you'll see the most incredible amount of building work yeah. going on and that's because you have high-tech companies now piling into Cambridge yeah um, in a way that in a way that's very reminiscent of Silicon Valley so stay here for another four or five years yeah stay here for another four or five years try to grow a little bit um, mm -hmm. I mean we've been growing 
quite fast. You know, we, we went from a million in our first year, which seemed insane to us at the time, sure. to probably, I suspect, we'll do four million units this year. I hope to see you back four or five years time. Well, we'll come back and see us. Perhaps near in Cambridge? Or yeah, can't you, can't you, I mean, see how many of these buildings we've taken. I mean, like, <laughs> seriously, I mean, you know, really, you know, I actually don't think in terms of headcount, we're like, we've got an no. amazing team here. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm, I, I suspect if you came back in five years, my 20 people might only be 30 or 35 people. Yeah. But our hope is that the, the scale of the impact we're having with Raspberry Pi as a business and also as a charity will have, will have, will have gone up, you know, tenfold. Excellent. Well, thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah.